This Indian state banned Muslim polygamy and didn't stop there. I'm going to give you a teaser of what this means and what this is all about. The state of Uttarakhand, Uttarakhand implemented the Uniform Civil Code. And I am in full support. Okay, I'll explain. Let's get into this. The northern Indian state of Uttarakhand has taken a bold step in, 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 by implementing a uniform civil code, or UCC as it's known, by setting the precedent as the first Indian state to pass a UCC since the country gained independence in 1947. This comprehensive legislation seeks to harmonize civil laws across all religious communities, addressing marriage, divorce, inheritance, and adoption with a unified approach. Notably, the UCC outlaws several practices, including polygamy and triple talaq, which is a Muslim practice allowing instant divorce by a husband declaring talaq three times. And I'll get into that in a second. It also prohibits uh, nikal halala, a complex ritual requiring a divorced woman to marry another man and then consummate that marriage and then get divorced again before she can remarry her first husband. And it also outlaws idat, which is a period of waiting that is mandated for Muslim women after a divorce or widowhood before she can get remarried again. The legislation establishes a common marriage age and introduces equal rights for men and women in divorce and property matters. Critics, however, decry the law as intrusive, especially for its regulations on live-in relationships, now demanding registration with the government under threat of punishment. Quote, the code allows a third party to file a complaint against a couple who failed to register their relationship, highlighting the controversial narrative, excuse me, nature of this mandate, igniting debates over the intrusion into personal freedoms versus the pursuit of uniform civil rights. Okay, let's get into this for people who have no idea what is going on and why this is significant. <clears throat> so prepare yourself for an info dump because I was researching this a lot yesterday. <laughs> because, okay, for those who are not aware, in India, for certain elements of your life, and this usually includes marriage, this includes divorce, this includes inheritance, sometimes it includes adoption, um, sometimes it includes like, well, usually land rights are excluded. It depends on the kind of personal law. So in kind of these areas of life, which used to be kind of ruled by customary law, in India, they have something called personal laws, and the personal laws are different for different religions in the country. So you will have a different personal law if you are a Hindu, except what's important to note is that the Hindu personal law is actually a negative classification, meaning the Hindu personal law applies to anyone that is not Muslim, anyone that is not Zoroastrian, anyone that is not Jewish, or anyone that is not Christian. So it's a negative classification. Anyone that you're not from any of those categories, you're shoved under the branch of Hindu personal law. So that's Sikhs, Jains, Hindus, etc. Next, you have Christian personal law, you have Muslim personal law, Jewish, and Zoroastrian. All of these types of people have their own distinct laws, their own distinct rights under these laws. And there's a historical context for this. And we can talk about that a little bit if we want. But basically, what that means is that if you live in different communities, you will either have, you essentially have completely different rights and privileges. And there has been a huge push by the BJP, you know, the ruling party of India, Hindu Nationalist Party. There's been a push for decades to bring into effect a uniform civil code, which is basically the idea that we get rid of these personal laws and we have one unifying civil code that everyone fits under. And I personally, there's a lot of criticism and we'll get into it, but I think that pushing for a uniform civil code is a fantastic thing. I think it's a fantastic thing. I think that, so we can get into more details, but in general, this is something that I support. And there are people, like, especially like leftists or whatever, they're crying over this. 
And I think it is so freaking fake because there, it is not perfect. Let me be clear. It is not perfect. But I think that this is a major step towards getting religion out of the law. It's not perfect, but it is a huge step forward getting religion out of the law in India. Because, so for example, this is most controversial in the realm of getting rid of Muslim personal law. And getting rid of the Muslim personal law is important because that meant that there are elements of Sharia that are actually implemented and observed within Indian personal law for Muslims. Like, and this is actually a relic of it, it, it is a relic of the British Raj because the Sharia Act was actually originally passed under the British Raj. And then it was the Muslim League that basically had a pan India Muslim identity project where they wanted to make the Muslim identity more important than the Indian national identity it was very successful in pushing forward this personal law in the 1930s. Beforehand, Muslims were more likely to follow local customs, including even worshiping other local like gods and spirits in, in, in regional identities until there was this project to create this like nationalized Muslim identity. I don't know. Anyways. So this is a huge, very controversial thing. And when it comes to the polygamy angle, one thing that's important to note is that my understanding is that it's actually a very small minority of Muslims that engage in polygamy in India, let alone this specific state, which is, you know, by the Himalayas. <clears throat> Second, I saw a poll from 2013 that said that over 90% of Indians don't think that there should be Muslim polygamy because out of all the different communities and all the different personal laws, it is only under personal Muslim personal law that you are allowed to have polygamy. For every other religious identity, it is illegal, first of all. And so there are lots of these elements within all these different flavors of personal law where things that are illegal for one group are legal for another group. And it, it has always confused the hell out of me from many perspectives. And one of the perspectives is like, just from the idea of you just had the chance of being born into some random country community, and now you have a completely different set of rights available to you because of some accident of birth. Either privileges or you have things that are not allowed to you, but they would be allowed to someone else. And that's just absurd to me. And so one of the things that I have seen, so there are a lot of people that hate this that are freaking out about this for a couple of different reasons. And we'll get to the reason of the live-in partnerships and the live-in relationships in a second, because that's kind of like my one of my biggest contentions with this UCC or how they're doing it in Uttarakhand. But one of the contentions that I have seen is that this is against India's diversity. And any like so-called like lefty progressive person that is genuinely saying that needs to get their head checked. Because personally, I do not understand how disparity of treatment under the law is a positive form of diversity. How in the world is differential treatment under the law on the basis of religion an exp a positive expression of diversity. It's crazy to me. It's crazy making. Yeah, Darko was saying equality under the law should be one of the main goals. Exactly. So when I was reading, so I would like to read a lot of different sources. I was reading an Al Jazeera piece about this. And they're like, oh, well, critics say that, you know, this is a question of valuing uniformity over equity. Okay. Oh, D, I'm going to get into the child marriage in a second. Just you wait. Okay, here's the thing. What? Okay, I'm, I'm very familiar 
with the language and philosophy of these diversity, equity, and inclusion people. I know this ideology very well. I understand it very well. Can anyone explain to me how this is a matter of equity? Equity. Can anyone explain to me how it is equitable to have a gray area in the law where all other girls are not allowed to be married until the age of 18, but the Supreme Court still has to figure out if Muslim girls are allowed to be married after puberty, married after the age of 15. How is that equity? How is that equity when the like Muslim personal law has no established minimum for the age of marriage? We're like, oh, it's the it's the battle of uniformity over equity. What are you talking about? So many of these the these things on the books are so discriminatory towards women. And there are communists that are literally against this because they're like, oh, this is the patriarchal Hindutva. I'm At like, what, what age can you get married for Muslims in India? Okay. My understanding. This is very complicated, and this is actually a gray area in Indian law. So I do not anyone want anyone to think that I am an authority on this, right? So there is a federal law which has the age of marriage for women be 18, the age of marriage for men be 21. However, under personal law, Muslim personal law specifically, there is no minimum set age for the age of marriage. There is, it's the age of puberty. However, if a child is married below the age of 15, she has rights to divorce. So there's this gray zone between the ages of 15 to 18. And in fact, there's cases in the Supreme Court to actually spell out this gray zone and decide essentially which law takes primacy over the other. That's my understanding. People can correct me if I'm wrong. So just saying 21 now, do I, that's not the case. That's not my understanding, at least in this state. So it's, I, can, I cannot understand these arguments against it from the perspective of diversity, because once again, I do not understand how disparity so get and get treatment under the law is diversity. Come on. It is. It, it actually makes complete sense, right? So you have, a, a couple of, I will give you an example, right? You have a hundred people, okay? A hundred men, okay? And you kick them all in the ball hard, right? And if all of them can complain to the police, that would not be diversified, right? But if only 50 of them could be, would be considered a crime and they could complain to the police, but the other 50, when you kick them in the ball, you would say, for you, this is legal. What happened to you is completely legal, and you cannot complain to the police. Now you have diversity, right? You have diversity in how you apply the law. So apparently the left also wants that kind of diversity, right? This is how it works. Lovely. Because, yeah, that sounds, that sounds like an ideal. This sounds like a liberal ideal. Yes. All for the sake of diversity. So here are some major criticisms. Oh, yeah, apartheid. Hey, that is apartheid. Isn't that apartheid? That's kind of apartheid. Different. I think different I think that's a horrible apartheid. argument. I'm not gonna get into that. Um no no that's but but this is this is apartheid, isn't it? Like if, if you're a Hindu <laughs> woman in India, right? Uh you have more rights now against you know against men abusing you than a Muslim woman. So this is technically a part of this different How levels so? of citizenship. You have more legal rights in marriage if you're not a Muslim. Uh, if you're not a Muslim woman. You mean for rights rights to divorce is what you mean? For all sorts of rights. Like if you're a child, um, if you're, you know, under personal marriage laws for a Muslim woman is horrible, Right. So yeah, if, no, I just want you to be specific in what you're saying because, like, for example, the divorce laws, I think, because of this, did become substantially more equal. Like, it's not even it's not even a joke. Like, it's no, it's ridiculous. I know, I know, but I'm just I know I'm saying I'm supporting this unification of the law. I'm saying without it, 
technically India is apartheid for against Muslim women. So that's why you should make the, the, the argument for making the law equal for everyone is that without equal law for everyone, you're technically have different levels of citizenship. Like if you have two like different laws for different citizens, what some of them are going to be more fair than other other ones. And that means that you're as a citizen, you have better laws for some people and worse laws for some other people. That makes it two-tier citizenship, and that's basically apartheid. So this is the, what the BJP is doing here is an anti-apartheid measure. I think I'm going to be completely yeah. honest. I think that's like a step too far, like a little bit ridiculous argument to make. But I do like the that. effort to push for a singular law and equal treatment underneath the law. Okay, but here are some major contentions and the reasons why this is flawed. Okay. And the reason why yeah. this is flawed is because, for example, tribal communities in Uttarakhand are exempted from this. So people are saying, if you're really pushing towards uniformity, then the tribal communities should also be included. They should not be exempted. I think that's a fair criticism. Another criticism that people have is that um, there's there's a new provision under the law that people are finding very problematic. And this is actually one area that I do genuinely find a little bit problematic. So there are there is a provision in the law that says that if you have a live-in, so cohabitation, married relationship, no, excuse me, unmarried relationship, and you live together, then you have to go register with the government. And my understanding is, because I had a hard time figuring out what the intention with this provision is, my understanding is that the um, intention behind this is that if that couple has a child out of wedlock, that that child has similar rights to inheritance, similar rights as a child that was from a married from, from a marriage. However, people are freaking out about this provision because they're saying if I have to go register my unmarried relationship, there's a high chance that I will experience harassment. There's a high chance that my family could find me and that this is going to particularly punish intercaste and interfaith relationships. That it's like they're asking for trouble. They're asking for um, a, a, a problem. And so they have concerns that under the Indian constitution, like I have rights to privacy and this is a major violation of my privacy. So I think that is a more genuine concern. Um, what do you think about that? Yeah, that part, that part is genuine concern, but overall the whole push is, um, I mean, that's just a, a mom, one part of it that seems problematic, but overall I support the push, except this specific part of it. Yeah, I think uh, other people in the uh, yeah, but the, but uh, the whole thing in like people who are criticizing that part, they should also mention if if they were being honest, they have to put, um, show their support for the whole thing in general. Yeah, I think yeah. it's in general like there are issues with this, but I think right. this is a giant step forward. If you are a genuinely progressive person, you will support a step to remo remove religious law from the the law of the state. That is, th this is this is a push towards establishing like equal rights for all citizens. Why there are like left so called lefty people freaking out about this is absolute absurdity to me. And there are people you know that are like. Oh, you're forcing me to practice a religion that is not my religion, blah, blah, blah. Suck it up. You're part of a nation. You need to observe the laws of this nation. And it's not religious laws anyways. What are you talking about? These are secular laws. I mean, Hindus, Hindus don't get to uh, have laws that is based on Hinduism. So you're, this, you're just being equal. You don't, I mean, is, the laws are not based on Hinduism, are they? And that's not exactly my understanding. But the idea is that everyone is supposed to be subject to the same law. Again, there are still same flaws law, with this because Hindu there are some law. exemptions. These are not Hindu laws, though. These are secular laws. 
Well, the UCC, yeah. But then there are people that are like, oh, no, they're just trying to like basically shove people into Hindu, Hindu law, blah, 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 blah. And it's I don't think that's a fair law. assumption. But no, they're even yeah. saying that 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 being forced to follow secular law is against their religion because their religion uh-huh. involves rights to inheritance, involves rights of religion, et cetera, et cetera. I'm like, okay, so then just come out and say that you're an yeah. Islamist and you want Islam to be the law. Like, just, 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 yeah. you're an Islamist. Like, yeah, that doesn't help work, right? I, I could have a religion that requires me to steal money, and I, that, that's such, such a dumb argument. Like, okay, you have your laws against stealing. My religion says stealing is okay. Now what? Like, well, fuck off. <laughs> like, I, I don't care. <laughs> right? Like, my religion says that I could have marry children. I'm like, okay. Good to hear. Uh, you go to jail here if you do that. Sorry, I don't. They, yeah. I don't know why people think that's such a that's a good argument. Well, my religion says I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. Like, why should people care? Yeah, I um, I don't know, and like, I'm not going to pretend that. India is like this per- perfect secular nation. There's obviously a huge amount of issues that are still occurring. And I think there are things within the UCC that still need to be improved. But I think this is a big step in the right direction. Like, And people in the live chat are disagreeing with me. But my understanding is that the marriage age for women, maybe it was just this UCC, maybe it was not federal, was 18 for women and then 21 for men. Like, that would be an example where I think there should be improvement. Where I'm like, it should be the same age for everyone. Yeah. Because that that's what because I was reading mind. in all the articles. That was like all the everything but that I was a, reading in I, the articles yesterday. Yeah, but that's a minor issue. Like in when you have Muslims marrying children, you know, having that difference between men and women when it comes to both of them being above 18 is you know like, okay you could figure you can worry about that later worry about the muslims in your country that are marrying children <laughs> that is your priority there yeah i mean i don't know how the world is not united over this like how we're still like oh should we um give in to muslims having their own personal law like well let's check their personal law like holy crap no like that's an obvious no <laughs> Like, why is this a discussion? <laughs> like, holy, like, have you seen their laws? Have you seen their personal laws? Oh, by the way, the most important part that I don't know, you mentioned it at the beginning of the show, but I, I, I we need to focus on this because a lot of people know that some ridiculous Islamic personal family laws because it involves child marriage and people know about that. But the part that you said at the beginning of the show, we need to highlight that a bit more. Within Islamic law, if you divorce your wife, and you change your mind and you want to marry her again, you have to find a man to fuck her before you can marry her again. (laughs) I'm not making this up. This is Islam, okay? So if you divorce her and you want to remarry her, she has to have intercourse with another man before she can marry you again. This is genuinely Islamic law. I am not, I think people won't believe this. This is, is I'm not making this up. that? Because they have to also consummate it. Yeah, they have, she has what? to marry and consummate it and divorce that man. And then, like, it, and she then, cannot. And then do she has die. To, and then, so it's like, this is like a yeah. process of a year minimum. I don't know how long it takes, but you imagine you wanting to like fall you love your wife and you're like, okay, well, let's get back together again. And you have to go look for a man. It's like to you imagine only in Islam, only as in Islam, they're like, Can you please come fuck my ex-wife so I can marry her, please? Like imagine loving somebody and wanting to be with her and going and asking for men to come and fuck her. This is like j- nothing. Like we we won't come up with these things other than religion. Like only religion can make you do stuff like this. Like, do we see what anything like this anywhere else? Mufti Armin, no. what is the logic? Because with the 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 the, the, the practice of idat, like the practice of idat, <laughs> like I actually I don't agree, but I see it the did. logic. But with this, okay. I do not see the logic. 
the logic is Allahu Alam. How dare you ask for logic? <laughs> you fool. <laughs> you fool. You don't understand Islam. You just submit. You don't you 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 use your in Islam, you use your logic to figure out that Islam is true. And then once you know Islam is true, you submit. You don't ask for logic after that. That's how it works. But oh my goodness. There are people with that job. Did you know that? There are people that there, exactly. is, there are men. This has to be an industry. Oh yeah, there are speci- there are men that it's their job to come and fuck your ex-wife, like marry her, fuck her, and then divorce her so you could marry her again. That is their profession. You pay them to do this for you. You pay people to come fuck your ex-wife so you could marry her again. That's their job. This sounds like a recipe for spreading HIV. No, no, no. This has, they're, to, they're this has to spread HIV. No, I am. Dear ma'am, I'm a, I'm a professional. I know what I'm doing. This is why you pay me, so you don't go ra- ask random people off the streets. Okay? I'll fuck her real good. <laughs> I'll make sure she... I'll make sure it's really... She doesn't... <laughs> It's so weird. Like how like imagine a religion that is so obsessed with not like like not you having with sexual morality is now requiring you to make sure you go look for a man to to come and have sex with your ex-wife. This is the same religion that executes you for having, I don't know, adultery or sex out of marriage. Stones you to death. God, but. <laughs> I forgot about all this. Oh my God. <laughs> and guys, and now people are complaining like, how dare you take these laws away? Diversity. We want diversity. Let's keep these laws. Okay, sure. No. Like, I'm, I'm glad that many leftists prove how, e- like, they make it so easy for us uh, to show how ridiculous they are. If you're fighting for these laws to stay within your country, then you're not worth having a conversation with anymore. Like, you're just too ridiculous. Like, these are the laws that you're asking to remain on your country's, you know, legal system. You, you're, you're a joke. You're a joke. Get off. You know, you should be removed from the conversation. That's like the most complicated way to enact a cuckold fetish ever. That's the most complicated <laughs> <thing>. <laughs> Wait, this is a side. This is a this is a sidebar, but um, I I have a question. We were talking the other day, and I can't remember exactly what it was. And I was really trying to remember, Armin. Um, we were you were talking about some sort of Shia practice, and you told me about a new Shia practice that was so crazy that I hadn't heard of before. And I feel like it was something to do with semen. Like you were talking about something recently on the Persian show. Oh, no, I cannot talk about that on this show. That would get us. It's not, it wasn't she. We're already demonetized. No, this, that, that got us, that got that stream um, 18 plus uh, classification. So we got, we got more beyond demonetization if I talk about that. Like, we will get eight, oh, it's called age, age, we will get age restricted if I talk. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wait, but I can't, yeah. I can't remember what it was. Can you give me a hint? It was about detached penises and what to do oh. with them if you insert them into a vagina. And how, how yeah, that you're supposed to wash. So it's about washing um, requirements after you insert, insert a detached penis into your vagina, whether it's from a human or an animal or stuff like that. So I get it. But that we have is, but this just shows how perfect and complete Islam is. It just teaches you because no other religion will tell you um, what to do with detached penises. No other religion will tell you that, but Islam does, and it's a per- this is just shows how perfect Islam is. Anyways, I don't want to talk about this anymore. This just. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we had a stream on that, guys. If you want to go check it out, what was the name of the stream? <laughs> but that was on the Persian show, right? No, we did an English one as well. But oh, but that's it, right. 
it's actually this is just one example. There's a lot of other things that we talked about. It was unbelievably ridiculous things that Islam had an opinion on, and it was just upset with washing. It wasn't asking you why are you doing with all these detached penises. It was just saying that make sure you wash this hole and that hole, and when do you have to wash and when you don't have to wash. How much of it does does it have to get inserted? For you to have to wash But it wasn't giving you any rulings About not detaching penises It was just telling you what to do How much of it does it need to get in Before you have to wash it, I have so many questions Like was there an epidemic Of people cutting off penises Like how I does know, this even have... come into your awareness Is something you need to talk about It's a complete it... religion so It doesn't have to be a... <laughs> It doesn't have to be a common thing, okay? A, com a, a, a perfect and complete religion is a religion that will tell you what to do in every situation, even if it's not common. Yeah, I need to do another stream about that because I have more questions. I've been like reviewing that ever since, and I have even more questions. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It actually gets a lot worse. I, I'm I'm really afraid of telling you guys what they guess how, how much worse it gets, but because because we're on YouTube. But we should move on before we get in trouble. We got so many super chats. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. I just I just that's it's just so mind blowing. Yeah. Um okay, well, thank you everyone for the super chats. Let's dig into them. Mithras revisited gave gifted five atheist republics memberships thank you thank sir you. if you were gifted a membership by mithras please drop our new emojis in the live chat secular sakai gave a super sticker hi sakai it's good to see you again um thank trells you. gave 20 danish krona saying a preemptive case of indian mommy issues i'm not exactly sure what this is referring to in this context um mm. animation gave us a super chat thank you saying indian secularism equals we can't interfere in religion it's weird here it's kind of the reverse of laicite it's it it's kind of the reverse of laicite <laughs> um uh erkin Thank you for the super chat saying apartheid equals partness slash separate but equal arrangements. So this isn't apartheid. Yeah, again, I that I disagree as well. Um along that line, mind span wellness also gave a super chat saying apartheid is a system of state sponsored systemic racial segregation and discrimination designed to maintain dominance by one racial group, originally enforced in South Africa from 1948 to the 1990s. Um yeah, I, okay, I also disagree with that classification. Okay, guys, we don't have a specific definition for apartheid. Different people define it different uh, differently, so, but okay. But thank you. Um, Czar, I actually, Jace the Shepherd, I gave a currency that I don't know the origin of. A no. 14 Czar. Um, saying support that's, from that's a Christian. Like P.S. Stop the Satan stuff. Well, thank you for the super chat and the support. Uh, There's South, yes. South Africa. Oh, cool. Um, but we will not stop the Satan stuff. It's too much fun. <laughs> <laughs> okay. um, hail Satan, hail yourself. Um, <laughs> GJ gave a super chat. Thank you. Thank you for Saint the super chat. Armin just spelled out one of the main reasons for AR's existence to fight any and all laws given to different rights based on creed faith and gender exact mundo um thank you and we got another south african super chat from bijo saying don't forget oh, to wow, say you. triple to lock to divorce your wife so my understanding oh, is is that there were already a in 2018 there was a federal ruling that brought down the validity of triple to lock instant divorce so for those who don't know, in Islam, traditional Islamic jurisprudence, for a man to divorce his wife, all he has to do is say talaq three times. And in some schools of thought, you say it three times all at once. In some schools of thought, you say it three times over a period of months. 
And if you like cohabitate with your wife, like in between one of the talaks, like it's now invalid, blah, blah, blah. So it depends on the school of thought. But the idea is, is that if you say three talaks, talak, 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 you are instantly divorced. And meanwhile, for a woman to get divorced, it's not that easy. You have to go through a board of Islamic scholars. Am I correct? Well, you have to go to the courts and they will have to see how he has wronged you. Is he not doing his duties? And they will decide for you. By the way, I do want to make, defend my apartheid claim. Just one more sentence. Nobody complains when people say in Iran there is gender-based apartheid. Nobody comes and says, like, well, actually, that's not the real definition of apartheid. People, like, understand that, okay, we're just extending the definition just to make a point here. And people accept that. So that's what I'm saying. Yeah, no, I get that. I just want to quickly. The yeah. argument for yeah. gender apartheid is way more solid because there's a state si system of separate separateness. Having yeah. different well, personal laws saying, is not the same thing necessarily I'm, I just, I'm just saying being in india if you're a muslim woman you don't get the same legal rights than other muslim other women get right so you are just because a muslim now i am islamic law applies to me which is an, an inferior law compared to other women so i think like that's a little bit of an a you know close to being a gender apartheid okay i understand your argument better now so thank yeah. you okay. um so my understanding is, anyways, that the. Um, By the, the way, people are the, saying you just. I just got divorced. You just divorced me. People are saying. Um. So the, the so the Indian in 2018 around. Um. They made instant triple talak like invalid under the law. So in India, yeah. you, it's not actually valid for you to have it be instantly true that you're divorced. You have to go through more of a process. But um, ADI brings that up because he's saying men in emotional outrage said triple talaq divorce and then were forced to do the process. Yes, um, that's a that's actually a good point. Someone, like, 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 imagine having wife. a fight with your wife, having a fight with your wife, and you getting emotional. Like talaq, 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 and like, oh no. I made a mistake, like, no, 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 no backseas. Now you have to go find a man to fuck your wife. Or like, no, I was just like, I was just outraged. I was like, I don't know, like, there was, I didn't mean to do that. Like, no, nope, no backseas. You said triple chalak. If you want to have a family with this woman, uh, you know, that you live for 10 years and then just overnight you just said something that you regret right now, the only way to undo that is to find a man that will fuck your wife. Marry, fuck your wife, and then divorce her. And that's the only way to get her back legally to be a family again. That is three such words. A, yeah. That's such an instance of like you played yourself. You're like, ha, ha I'm gonna yeah. put your feelings. <laughs> Jokes on you. I'm gonna divorce you. Talak, talak, talak. And then you're like, ta -la, ta -la, ta -la. oh, I played myself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna need a lot of marriage counseling to get yourself out of this one. <laughs> um, <laughs> James Sendoku became a member. Thank you for becoming a member, James, and supporting the channel. Welcome to Satan's Minions. Um, Erickin gave us a super chat saying, Armin, that uh, consummate to remarry previous rule exists to discourage divorces in the first place so men don't divorce women for no reason. But when you no, make that's... it as easy as saying three words and in a no, relationship that's not the reason. hard... <laughs> No, that's not the it? reason. This is the technicality. Okay, so it's because the the Quran and the, you know the because Islam tells you that there's the concept of the edda, right? The, that um, it's basically like uh, if you look at how Islam talks about this and what you need to do to remarry, it didn't consider the scenario. But if you put everything together, you realize that you have to. For her to get be able to remarry, she needs to do this. So technically, this is this would be the only way. So it doesn't actually have any purpose. It's just within the legal code of Sharia, this part was not really, you know, thought through, and this was the only loophole left within the system for for somebody to be able to remarry their husband. 
So that's the, it, it, it didn't actually have a purpose. It's just a technicality that it was just left over from all the other rules that are there. Does that make sense what I'm saying? Oh. Like it. Huh. Okay. So if I say like, if I say that you have to like, you know, go through the process of it, uh, like before you remar remarry with, you know, from another man or something. And I don't tell you what to do. If the previous husband was your, if you want to marry your previous husband, then the only thing that would be left is for you to go marry somebody. Like this is just putting everything together and realizing like, holy crap, that's, that's the only thing that I could do now to get remarried. Anyways, it's too much. Hmm. It's too technical, legal, Islamic. Legal Shami is saying, I'm curious as to the origins of this tradition. Who wanted whose wife slash ex-wife as persona for them to make this rule up at the time of its origin? <laughs> no, this is this so is just a byproduct. Like, it's kind of like the the how how the 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 rulings about adoptions and adoptions like not being essentially like real children, all because Muhammad wanted Ali's wife. <laughs> <laughs> no, people are looking for a purpose this is, had no purpose this is just a technical conclusion of all the other things that the Quran says that you're supposed to do this would be the, the conclusion for what to do in such a situation it's just a what byproduct if, huh. what if there was a dude who legitimately had a cuckold fetish, and so he's constantly triple talaking his wife, <laughs> getting her <laughs> to have sex with another yeah. man, and then marrying yeah. her, and then triple talaking her again. <laughs> like, oopsie, I guess we now have to find somebody to come have sex with you. Oopsie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I tripled to lock you again. <laughs> Don't worry, babe. I have to be there when he does it to make sure that you actually consummate so I can marry you again. I just have to verify. I don't think you get, no big deal. I don't think you get to be there, unfortunately, for him. No, but I mean, he <laughs> has to verify. No, no. So, no, he... <laughs> <laughs> um, Gajan American uh, gave a super chat. Thank you, Gajan, saying Draupadi had five husbands. This is a Hindu goddess. We should have four women and five men polycools. Well, I do not want to know what the legal ramifications in terms of a will would be in a situation like that. <laughs> um, GJ gave a super chat saying. Do some Islamic nations not ha equal the minimum marriage age with the age of responsibility, nine for girls, 15 for boys, except when parents agree? Do some Islamic nations not yeah, equal? Yes, so it was like, it was like that. I don't it understand was like the question. Age. What do you mean not equal? Not equal the minimum yeah, the age. The minimum age. He's saying. Oh. He, yes. Let me tell you. Yeah, it was like this before in Iran. They changed the legal mm -hmm. age now for marriage, but before in Iran, it was nine for girls and fifteen for boys. Yeah, it was before right there. But technically, you could get married earlier, but not consummated until that age. Oh, I don't know about that. Theoretically, right? I don't know. Maybe not in Iran, but in general, wouldn't that theoretically be valid? I don't. Oh, yes. Muhammad married Aisha at six. Exactly. Right. Yes. Um, Ankur gave 200 rupees. No comment. Thank you, Ankur. Gijan is saying, as an ex-Daoist, I thought our urine fixation was weird. Okay, Gijan, please tell me about the Daoist urine fixation. I didn't later, know about this. Later. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. What does that mean? I, did, um, I, knew, I, I knew Taoism was obsessed with going with the flow. I just didn't know what flow they were referring to. <laughs> I just dropped my stuff. <laughs> okay. I didn't know they took it literally. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you disconnected your camera. <laughs> oh, my right. gosh. Um, and Benny is asking, how do you, we find these streams, Armin? Speaking of streams, um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> do you remember what was the episode where you were talking about the, um, 
<clears throat> disembodied phalluses. I think it was a stream with Anna. Yes. Let me check. Okay, you check. I'll answer the rest of the super chats. GJ is saying from a uh, Netherlands native, apartheid is Dutch separatist. Wait, do you mean like that that's actually, it actually comes from Dutch as a word? If so, I did not know that. Uh, etymology. Oh, it, you're right. <clears throat> oh, that's so interesting. I didn't know that. Well, thank you for teaching me something, GJ. Um, uh, he also sent a super chat saying, in a similar vein, Islamic men with less than four wives just have an ultra brief marriage with a working girl, quote unquote, consummate, triple talaq, and business done. My understanding is, is this is more of a Shia practice. The the temporary marriage is more of a Shia practice. Armin, am I wrong or not? So guys, for those who don't understand what this means, what this means is essentially instead of having you know, prostitution, essentially, what you have is a system where you have temporary marriages with people and then oh, it's yeah. just done mm -hmm. when the deed is done. I know that's a thing yeah, in so Iran, but is it only a Shia thing or is it also another sex? No, it's a Shia, it's a Shia thing and Sunnis hate this. I Many Sunnis hate Shias for this. So in Shia Islam, you could pay a woman uh, that you're not married to to have sex with her uh, as long as you agree uh, uh, beforehand it's the certain amount of money that you're supposed to give her and how many hours you're going to be with her, how many hours or days or whatever, the period of time. And basically it's uh, Islamic prostitution, right? And then you say an Arabic thing and and then you are technically now, it's, it's called Sira, right? So you could, other than your wives, you could also go pay people to have sex with outside of your marriage, Islamically. Oh, wow. It's called Sira. Yes. <laughs> what if you're like... I don't know, on a date with someone, oh, maybe not a date, but you're like talking to someone and you're like, oh, you know, have you ever been divorced before? And they're like, about 150 times. <laughs> <laughs> um, Parsa gave super chat. Thank you, Parsa, saying, uh, brother, Bia, Shiraz, Azizam, we'll eat some fast and short. <laughs> <laughs> can I come? Can I come to Shiraz and eat some fast and June? It's one of my favorites. Well, or are you only talking to Armin? I mean, That's not fair. I think you can go, and I can. Uh, recently, a prostitute went to Iran and came back without any problem. So, because she was not an Iranian citizen, she had no problem. But I think you should, you should probably, you probably can go to Iran, but I can't. I still don't think it's a good idea. But, um, by the way, I mean, did find the stream. Okay. It was called, the stream was called, What is Anal Jihad? I'm going to go to the bathroom. I'll be right back. You can okay, okay. Okay, so guys, the stream that you're looking for that I discuss all these topics is called What is Anal Jihad and Is It Islamic? It's a very good stream. Go check it out. And at the very end of the stream, I discuss all of these things that I just mentioned to you guys, all these weird laws. But at the beginning of the stream, we talk about the concept of Anal Jihad, which is also interesting. But guess, guess in the live chat, what is anal jihad? And I'm like, it's not a joke. It's really, it's actually about anal sex. Um, <laughs> all right, let me read the super chat. Oh, Susie left me with this voice. So, brother, Bia Shiraz Azizam will eat some fasinja. By the way, I'm half Shirazi, Parsa. And thank you for the super chat. Um, Erkin is saying, self worshiping gods, lol. What? Self-worshipping gods. Okay. Well, thank you so much for the super chat. I appreciate that. And then Jace the Shepherd is saying, well, I can't become a member because you'll say welcome to Satan's Minions. Also, what do you all think about AP and David Wood streams? Oh, I like him. AP, if I had more time, I would watch um, AP and David Wood streams more often. But they're very long. I wish they were shorter, but they're fun. And I wish I had more time to watch them. 
But so you're not becoming a member because of the satanic names of our membership? What is it's just they're just joke. Why are you taking them so seriously? It's fine, like it's just a joke. We don't believe in satanic stuff, which is but I I know there are other ways that you could become um I don't know. I'll ask Susie. Guys, let us know in the comment section after the stream is over if you like the satanic theme of our membership names or would you, if you would prefer if we change them. Let's ask other people because we're a republic. So let's ask the opinion of our community. Uh, GJ is saying, I saw the practice of flash marriage. Hold on, let me bring this. Flash marriage, working girl, con uh consum uh, consumption uh, consumption at, at on a national geographic documentary about super rich arabs dubai qatar bahrain oh really interesting flash marriage working girl really in dubai bahrain um that should not be allowed in sunni islam because that's sunni islamic countries they shouldn't allow that this is something that you have happens in iran especially in religious cities like Mashhad, they have that as well. Like a lot of people, a lot of Shia Muslims travel to Iran, for example, for from Iraq to religious cities for these is Islamic prostitutes. Do you know who makes the most amazing, gorgeous, and other adjectives that I can't use here on YouTube? Blasphemous art ever? We do. And for some reason, we are giving it away for free. Download them now using the link in the description before we change our mind.